guys! Welcome to my channel, Moxie DIY in Java. I'm Michelle. Today, we are making an Easter wreath that is pretty awesome, if I do say so myself. It's a Mackenzie Childs inspired wreath, and it's amazing how much cheaper I was able to make it versus the high end version. So, grab your favorite cup of coffee or your favorite beverage and join me! I want to extend a quick welcome to all of my subscribers who are returning. Great to see you again. And to those of you who are joining me for the first time, maybe from the playlist or otherwise, welcome. I hope that you find some good inspiration here and you like what you see. And if you do, please consider subscribing and liking my video. This video is part of a playlist, the Mackenzie Childs Inspired Spring DIY Challenge hosted by Decorating Ants Place and Indie Annie Jones. You can find the playlist in the description box below, as well as links to both their channels. For this DIY, you will need a wreath form, multiple stems of green foliage, I used around 10, as well as floral wire, wire snips, six inch plastic plates, scissors, printouts of 12 plates, your choice of ribbons, and not included popsicle sticks and hot glue. We are making the fern wreath from the Mackenzie Childs website. As you can see, it's really beautiful, so I'm going to try to recreate it. These two bunches are from Joann's, and the next four are from Dollar Tree. I'm going to attach everything with floral wire. I made the decision to use a square wreath, but feel free to use any shape you'd like. I plan to attach all of these with the cup side up. And now I'm just going to start laying out my base layer all the way around. Here I am showing that I'm attaching them to the middle rung. going to be using these same wires throughout to attach the rest of the foliage. When you are attaching your leaves, you want to make sure that all of them are pointing in the same direction. It tends to give your wreath a higher end look. it's easier to make reeds sitting on the floor. Are you the same?
now it's time for the ferns. I'm going to add in the darker fronds first, followed by the lighter ones so they stand out a little better. And now I'm going to cut all of these stray wires. I forgot to hit record on the last part, but once I clipped all of the stray wires, I wrapped the entire wreath with one long strand of wire, just to give them extra support. Now we're moving on to the 12 plates. These are the printouts I had made, and all I did was trace the plate I'm going to use around the printouts, and then cut them out. We're going to use Mod Podge to attach these, and we have seven. To apply a light layer of Mod Podge, being sure to get all of the edges of the paper printout, and then I'm going to apply it to the plate, pressing from the middle out, and then going around the plate, pinching the edges against the plastic plate. I found that this was the best way to get the adhesion that we needed so the paper does not lift. If we get any pleating around the edges, it really doesn't bother me. Most of the printouts I used have scalloping and detail along the edges, so it kind of hides those little bitty pleats. I had originally planned to paint these plates white, but it turned out that my printouts were large enough that I didn't need to.
Once these have dried completely, you have the option of placing another plate on top to give it the sheen of a plate. <laughs> I am not going to. I like the way they look matte without the additional plate. Now that these have dried, we are going to move on. You will need two popsicle sticks and clip them into about half an inch, two inch pieces. Doesn't really matter, it's going to be on the back. You'll also need your floral wire and wire snips, as well as hot glue. Be aware as you are gluing the wire to the backs of these that you have the top pointed up so that way you're placing the wire in the proper spot. Now it's time to attach the plates. I have chosen to have my wreath in a diamond shape with this part as my top. This is the part where I place and fuss around with the plates until I see what I like. And this is it. Now I'm going to wire each of the plates onto the wreath. Here I wanted to show you how I am attaching it to the wreath. I'm placing the wire through the middle and the outside rung, so the middle rung is on the inside. Then I'm taking the wire ends and twisting them along that center rung, and later I will clip those ends off. To find the printouts I used for these plates, I searched for blue toile plates in the images category and I found a ton that I really liked. What I usually do when I find printouts is I look for one that is at least 1000 or higher in size. Now it's ribbon time. 
pretty much I'm just going to pick and choose what I think would look good with the plates and the wreath. And I'm going to be doing a fold over method, which is just basically, as you can see, folding the ribbon over so there are equal loops on each side. Once all the ribbons I want are laid on top of each other, I'm going to clip some wire and wrap it around the middle to create our bundle. I'm going to be using the same method of attaching this ribbon as I did for the plates, except I will not be clipping off the excess wire. Instead, I will be twisting it together and attaching the ends to the wreath to create a loop for hanging. Now time to fluff the bow. Pretty much all I'm doing is pulling, separating, and fluffing, and repeating. I like to dovetail the ends of my thicker ribbon and cut at an angle my thinner ribbon. All you do is fold the end in half and cut up towards the ends of the ribbon. You'll notice in the final look of the wreath, I chose to go a different route with the gingham ribbon. I felt like it was a little messy having that big fluff right in the middle. So I chose to layer the, that ribbon on the thick blue ribbon and having a smaller bow in the middle. And here it is. This is a close-up of the Mackenzie Child's wreath and mine. I hope that you have enjoyed spending this time with me as much as I have enjoyed spending it with you. And if you like the content that you've seen, please consider subscribing and clicking that like button. Please also consider hitting the bell so you know when I put out all the rest of my videos. I plan to put out more Easter videos to coordinate with this wreath. You can also find me on Pinterest, Instagram, and Rumble. All of my handles will be in the description box. Until I see you in the next video, take care.